We pray real quick and we go get rocking and rolling. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to put this video out and get these strong messages out, Father, and show people the truth that they are missing. Father, you are a good God and you have taken care of us and we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So I'm back, right? Back in the house. You got you to gotta persevere, right? Do not, guys, push the like button. Do not push the heart button throughout the whole video. Don't push the like or heart video. Now, after the video is no longer live, you can push like and heart all you want to. <clears throat> but when the video is live, do not push like and heart. Please do share the video with everybody everywhere because this is going to be huge, right? Okay, so let me tell y'all what I wanted to talk about earlier before the video started messing up. Number one, guys, uh, what we need to understand is that uh, Trump has put some fire stuff in the midst of his executive order that was released two days ago uh, on Wednesday. And it, I'm telling you guys, is a beautiful thing. Um, he dropped some fire in there that is hidden from the world. A lot of people don't understand and know what this CPS court is. They don't know that it's a contract court. They don't know that it's a private court. They don't know that it's a private business. They don't know that Social Security Act deals with insurance, not freaking government stuff. They don't understand that it's not real law. They don't understand that it's not public law. And that's super important. So uh, everybody share this with everybody. I'll share, share this with some more people because it's that freaking important. Um, I think I prayed already. Let me know if I prayed. If I didn't pray, say, David, you didn't pray, dude. You better get it together. Uh, but I think I did, though. I tried to do the video so many times over, I probably prayed a million times. But um, so I was telling you guys, during the time where Chaz slash Chop has taken over an American part of an American city, um, they have done all these different things where they are rioting and looting. Somebody died on the spot. So we got an actual insurrection going on inside of America. We also have what they're calling a pandemic that I don't think really is a pandemic because if you got less people dying than the flu, that's not really a pandemic. And if your, um, your, uh, your rate or your percentage chance of living is 99 point, you know, nine, seven percent or something like that. Uh, it's a very low death rate, very, very, very low, and we are being deceived to even think about calling it a freaking pandemic. So you think about the fact that you got this so-called emergency going on, you got an emergency with fires being burned in, in all these different states, you got race issues going in all these different states, you have uh, city officials dropping off bricks for Antifa and BLM to be able to throw through people's windows, in all these different cities. All those things. Can anybody explain to me why the focus of Donald Trump was to make a CPS? Now, look, think about this. Schools are closed. So CPS is taking less kids right now because schools are closed. Libraries are closed. So less kids are at the library where they can have CPS called on them hospital routine procedures are closed so there's less of a chance that cps would be called on people so can somebody explain to me why in the world in the midst of all these emergencies and and people are shutting down police with all this and businesses shut down trump is actually making executive orders for cps Out of all the problems and all the issues, don't forget the World Health Organization. Don't forget Fauci in trouble. Out of all these different things that are happening right now, how is it that Donald Trump makes an executive order to show that his emergency is dealing with CPS taking kids? Can somebody explain that to me? The biggest emergency on Wednesday for Donald Trump was the fact that CPS are taking kids without due process. Inside his affidavit, uh, his uh, document, he shows where he says that they need to give high power attorneys to parents so that their voice can be heard as well as the kids before CPS writes a petition. Why would Trump say that? He's saying that because he understands that CPS are writing petitions for kids 
and they never should be stealing them in the first place. Donald Trump in his executive order also acknowledged where no other president in American history has ever acknowledged since 1935 that CPS is being used as a system to make money off of kids. They have never acknowledged that these people are unlawfully taking people's kids and doing it without due process, doing it without hearing the parents' voices, and also doing it without the parents even knowing their rights. If, they, if Trump says that they're doing unnecessary removals, Trump is telling something to y'all that nobody else will tell y'all. If you look inside my affidavit, when it talks about like the preservation of rights in section 401 of ASFA, the big bad Hillary law, it says that you are not to unnecessarily remove kids. What's the reason for necessary? What's the necessary reason for moving kids? If you see an emergency where somebody is killing a kid right now, destroying them, breaking their body parts, they're bleeding, beat up real bad, something like that. You as a man or woman or you as CPS can go in and grab that kid right there. The police can grab that kid right there. That's a necessary removal. Exigent circumstance. Think about this. Wow, that's deep, Karen. See, so Karen hit him up too. Karen's a powerhouse, big powerhouse in the movement. So you got to think about this, guys. Trump has over two... Please don't hit the like button, y'all. Please don't hit the like button. It's going to tear up the video. Trump has over 2,000 affidavits that went to his administration through Francesca Amato. Two, over 2,000 she sent herself to distinct people who then came out and told that CPS was trafficking on Epic Times. So the people who we hit affidavits with directly know that we proved in Hillary Clinton's law that Bill Clinton passed, right? The one that Connie Reguli helped with. In the law that all these lying attorneys said, CPS could take your kids, we proved in an affidavit that the actual ASFA said, no, you are not to unnecessarily interfere with private family affairs or inappropriately. It's inappropriate because it goes against the constitution. But that law, ASFA, was only in addition to the 1935 Social Security Act that created the power for CPS. In the affidavit, it said that no federal agent officer or representative, which the director for your CPS is a federal agent, it sa says that they can't take kids against your objections. So that's an affidavit. Trump's people saw it. So let me show y'all what they did. So I made a trust argument, and I showed many of y'all on open Facebook, saying, and I did it to the Supreme Court Justice of Arizona too, and y'all saw what he did. He told that it was the legislature doing it. We sent it to Trump. We sent it to Barr. Out of all the things that Trump could be tripping over right now, he ain't give a freak about all this other stuff. On Wednesday, he was writing to stop CPS from unnecessarily removing kids. See, people who hate Trump just because, just because, right, they got this race issue, they got this freaking Democrat versus Republican issue, they got this, oh, he was rich issue, they got all these dumb issues, but the same people want their kids back, and they're talking about Trump ain't this, he's not for us. Look, I don't give a freak if he liked me or not. I wouldn't give a freak if Trump was the worst racist in the world. If he puts in an executive order that he knows they're taking our kids without right, and nobody else would ever say that on our behalf, why the freak would you be upset or worried about what Trump is doing in his own personal life, what his taxes look like? Why wouldn't you be happy that he's putting something in the freaking law at a time when they're saying everything else is crazy and we should be looking at defunding police and all this? He's like, uh, what about you put some guidance documents together to show the freaking CPS the real law and force them to let the parents know their rights? Did y'all see that in there? I'm going to let y'all see something else though. I'm going to let y'all see something else. See, because we've been telling y'all how they're using private court. Y'all better go back and look at that document. Because Trump was spilling the beans telling. No president in history has ever told that CPS is unlawfully taking kids. Trump admitted it and said he wanted better attorneys so the voices of parents and their children can be heard pre-petition. That means... I don't freaking want you to wait until CPS writes a petition to some fake court, right? Private court 
And I'm going to prove it to y'all. I'm going to show y'all how bad this dude Trump is. In a good way. I'm going to show y'all how bad he is. He's telling y'all stuff. We get too mad with all this other stuff that we don't hear. But I love y'all enough. I'm going to break this down and show it to y'all because y'all are my people. Y'all are my family. My obligation is to God and to y'all. So when I see the window open for y'all to have everything y'all want, I'm going to come tell y'all because y'all been crying over this. Y'all been begging God for this. Y'all been praying for this. Y'all been fighting diligently for this. Y'all been putting in the work. Y'all put in thousands of affidavits to uh, CPS and to Trump and to Barr and to his health and human services, right? So we know that happened. We know some good things came out of it. I'm going to show y'all the deep dirty that y'all might have missed. Y'all would be clapping and jumping up and down if y'all saw this. So if you read that dang order, you're going to see where he talks about the mothers and fathers are not having their voices heard and the children aren't having their voices heard. So he wants the top-notch attorneys to be able to deal with their cases before petition, which means if guidance documents come out to show the rights of the parents, that means the police will know the rights of the parents. The mothers and fathers will now know their rights, which the, the reason your kids are getting taken is because they're stealing them against your rights and nobody's telling you. The reason the police are coming with guns to take your kids is because nobody's putting out guidance documents where you can open up to page 35 and show them, hey, by right, you know y'all can't take my kids, right? You either cop, you either CPS. Okay, game over, everything is done. Now we don't have all these kids in the foster care system. You won't have all these kids in the foster care system if you stop it in the first place by letting it be known that it's been a fraud. This is what Trump is doing. He can say, I'm gonna give y'all a billion dollars to fix this, a trillion dollars to fix this, 90 trillion dollars to fix this. Don't look at it like Trump is giving more money to CPS when he's also saying, oh, I'm gonna use some real attorneys like I did during the time when they came after me that made constitutional arguments. And I'm gonna show that you don't have the authority under the constitution to even make freaking uh, charges against me. That's what Trump did to them when they tried to impeach him. He destroyed them in his public capacity. Please don't hit like, whoever that is hitting like, please don't hit like, type the word like if you like the video or type heart. Don't hit the word like, it's gonna kill our bandwidth and kill the video. So let me let y'all see what Trump did. He's a bad boy in a good way. Trump exposed for the first time in history that they're stealing kids without due process. Trump exposed that they're hiding your words and your voice. That's right, Toriano. And he also is making them show the hidden books that they're using for their, for their guidance. That tells your rights. So they've been able to steal your kids and get the police to believe they can steal your kids because there's nothing on paper that tells your rights. See, the state constitution covers your rights. That's why I use it in the affidavits. They're not using the state constitutions and your rights so that everybody thinks it's okay to take your kids. The parents think that they got the authority to take your kids. If you saw the law, you would be able to say, oh no, on page 35, it says you can't take my kids. And then you show the cops. On page 35, it says they can't take my kids. What are y'all talking about? Look, I don't have to have an argument with you over how many dishes I got in the sink. What, I, what we need to discuss is, where did you get power to take my kids? Because my rights say that you don't have it. See, the, the rest of the document deals somewhat with what happens after kids had to be taken into custody because they're orphans. So he's given money to get them to freak out of the system. He wants them to be able to live and be prosperous. But he understands that the state, just like Sandra Day O'Connor and them said, and if you read the whole case of Troxel versus Granville, that there's certain things that the state cannot provide for a child, just can't do it. You can't give them the love and the things they need to be able to be strong and right. You can give them a building to live in and make money off of them, but you can't help them to succeed. Now, did y'all catch the other thing that Trump said? Give me, I want y'all to take some guesses. Interactive guys, interact with me now. What else did Trump show us that was sick as heck inside of that document? Children and parents have rights, but CPS failed to show the law and hit it. That's right, Phyllis. Y'all remember in Luke 11, 52, the Bible says that the lawyers hide the truth. They hide the key of knowledge. And then they won't enter in themselves. They're not going to use the real law. And then those who are trying to enter, they hinder. They're going to block you. So they hid those manuals in every state on purpose. In one of those manuals, there's actually a page in every one that tells a mother or father how to demand their child back just with a couple of words and they have to give them back. 
they hid those. In Arizona, I know a guy named Dale McArdle who's been begging for over two years to see the official manuals of CPS to know how they work in his two books, and he has not been able to get them to give it for two years. Trump gave them, I believe, six months to publish it. Now, people hating on Trump, people, all these negative Nancys who don't want us to win or want to say that everything is down and bad, there's nothing we can do, they got guns, oh, it's so hard, man, I hate that, I hate that, because when you're living in that victim mentality, you never get the opportunity to stand up as a strong man or woman and do what's right, you never get to get past your angers and fears and doubts and take action, you're stuck. In this, oh, woe is me, everything is bad. Listen, at some time, you got to realize reality is reality. If they stole your kid, they stole your freaking kid. Now get up and fight, right? Get, go through the pain, suffer, cry, get the freak over it, and let's fight and get the freaking kids back. We cannot be victims our whole freaking life. Listen, I don't care what you go through. I'm not going to be some punk clown that tells you it's okay, cry for five years, cry for 10 years, be broken. No, you don't be broken, you be victorious. God didn't put you here to be broken. God didn't put you here to commit suicide and freaking uh, perish away because something bad happened to you, right? Something bad happened to you. Bad happened to all of us, but you are powerful. And I'm not gonna sit here and let you be weak because we need you to come together and fight. Phyllis says something powerful. Tammy did too, but I'm going to read Phyllis's. Attorneys and lawyers protecting their business by not showing you all real law. That's right. Even though you hire them to or get them appointed. That's right. So the thing is, they're all working in the same program. And people try to say to me, well, um, attorneys, you're not an attorney. I'm like, hold on, player. When did you lose your kid? A year ago. Okay, you lost your kid a freaking year ago. Did you know me? No. Okay. Did you know Fran? No. Did you know Robert? No. Okay, so was it David's fault, Robert's fault, or Fran's fault that you got your kid taken? Is it their fault? Because this is what they say. If you guys fight the system, you're harming parents. Shut the freak up. You sound like a coward. Let me Video slowing down. Dang it. Let me explain something. You had your kid lost when you met us, which means that we had nothing to do with your kid getting lost. Take some responsibility if you did something. If you didn't do nothing, understand that it was wrong and that CPS stole your kid. It ain't got nothing to do with us. Now, number two, let's take it further. You didn't know us when the kids got taken. We didn't have anything to do with your kid getting taken, right? We weren't here, right? Now, let's imagine something. How, not imagine, let's look at the real life truth. How many of you were in a courtroom with attorneys in the room when they stole your kids. When the process went down to take your kids, is there any one case in the whole freaking nation that y'all know about where an attorney wasn't involved? You got rights. Why does David Jose, Fran, Robert Slavin, Chris Hallett, Karen, freaking all these other people have to tell you what your rights are? When attorneys were in the courtroom and they ain't got nothing to do with your rights. Matter of fact, the attorneys told you, we're not going to worry about your rights. We're going to just fight to get your kids back. Right? Right. So what's happening is, it's not a court. It's not a judicial system. They're all playing together in a private system, stealing your kids. Now, I'm going to show you all something else that's pretty, pretty tight. Pretty big fire. <coughs> Who noticed what else Trump said? Who noticed what else Trump said? See, people can laugh and joke all night. People not taking this law stuff seriously in many cases. How if they don't know, don't know our rights? The attorneys know that they swore to the constitutions, state and federal. They're not telling you your rights on purpose so they can steal your kids. Attorneys send the cops to the house with you because they want your kids for a lot of cases but they don't tell the cops that they're not supposed to be taking your kids. So Trump is forcing them to now show the rights, which is gonna get them all in trouble, right? This is why the affidavits work so well because we put your rights in the affidavit. So when your rights are in the affidavit, 
on a piece of paper where they can read it, it's notice to the government officials and they can no longer say we have uh, done the right thing or we by good faith did this or that. It's like, no, dude, you know right here that you can't take my kids without right. You know right here, there's no law that says you can take my kids. You know right here, if you're a trustee, a judge, you can't take part with these clowns in a private court, right? It lets it be known. Yeah, this is a private court from the legislature and it's a contract court. Now, I'm going to prove something to y'all that a lot of y'all, I ain't heard nobody say nothing about yet. Why that dude Trump, when he put together that executive order, why did he bring up the term private law? He wanted to know what was going on, what they were doing. And he said something to the effect of, even if it's private or public law. Can y'all explain that to me? Why the freak Trump bring up the term private law and why is that important for CPS cases? <laughs> oh boy. Why did Trump bring up the term private law? Private law. Did y'all did y'all catch that? See, people want to argue over Trump's history. I don't give a freak who he had sex with. Why did Trump brought up the fact Trump brought up the fact that they are taking your kids without right. Trump brought up a fact that you need the best attorneys to stop them from doing it even before CPS can write a petition. Trump brought up the fact that they're hiding your rights from you and everybody else. Why the freak did Trump bring up the term private law in an executive order over CPS? What are you trying to do? Truthers? Just like he did with the back, back scene, what you see, back scene movement, right? The jab and arm. He takes the people who are in power and puts them on open blast and open display so people can start researching. When they find out what they're doing wrong, they start talking about it out loud. Everybody starts hearing and then Trump goes after him. He did the same thing with the World Health Organization. Did the same thing with Fauci, right? Now, I'm going to show y'all what the freak he talking about. Public law, y'all, deals with government officials and them having the power to handle people's business and how they relate with the people, with, with persons and uh, people. In public law, you use the government officials and the government officials will fight for your rights. They'll, they'll look at the Constitution of Arizona or the Constitution of Michigan and they'll say, oh, um, in public laws, government officials, we don't have the right to take anything from anybody except for if it's by due process of law and a jury of their peers. So really, we don't have the power to take anything. The jury has the power to take it, and that's their equal. So the people could take something from the people if one of the people did wrong. But we don't have the power or our agencies to take anything from the people. So in public law, there is no CPS because in public law, uh, dealing with government, an agency is not the government right an agency has no power over the people but what trump said was about private law can somebody talk to me about that can somebody help me to understand the significance of why cps is not public law it's private law and why did he let that cat out the bag because if you understand that cat whew, it's gonna be hell to pay y'all want me to break it down for y'all let say the word like but in the comments, comment the word heart, comment the word, break it down, whatever. If you want me to let y'all see what Trump just told y'all, because while everybody's mad and focused on dumb stuff, Trump just released a freaking nuclear weapon on freaking CPS and the attorneys. He, dude, when Trump putting a magnifying glass on your system, y'all already know he's the dude who say you're fired. He's the dude who come after you and make you look like a dummy. He's fighting real deep state people. So what y'all need to understand is, is that withheld private law to cause harm. No, see, here's what's happening. They are running these cases through private law, through fakery, and he knows it. And he's saying it so y'all can catch on. So y'all talk junk. And then he's going to go get him. I promise you. I guarantee you Trump is setting him up. And he's trying to let y'all get him. Let me tell you how. 
Private law is the law of contracts between private people where it can be governed inside of a system or a trust. So the Social Security Act is a trust. You see where it creates a board. The board is the ones who sit at the top of the trust, right? If you look, the Social Security Trust was created. That means that trustees of the Social Security Trust can hear the issues over Social Security. But you have to contract into it. And if you have to contract into it, Trump is trying to show y'all something. Anytime you have to contract into something, guess what? You got to have full disclosure. See, they made private laws for CPS and got y'all thinking it's public law. So they're running a private system in a private court that's not government and not public, taking your houses, taking your money, making you sell your stuff for private agreements that nobody gave you full disclosure of. They gave you a birth certificate when you were a baby, which you were legally handicapped to sign. So they let your mother sign for you and say your mother sold your rights away. Private law. They say you got a social security card. Your mother got that for you when you, when you were a baby. They say you got the birth certificate, but your mother signed it when she was high off of drugs after having a baby. Nobody had the power to write a contract to let them take your kids because you're working in a social security benefits program. So Trump brings out the fact that it's a, there's private law. He's showing y'all that y'all got cooperative agreements between each other, the state and federal and private law. You're not working as the government. If you're working in private law, you have no government authority. Anytime the government decides to get into a business enterprise like the Social Security Act, <clears throat> they're doing it as a business enterprise and it does not deal with the rights of the people. So if they're trying to take your kid from you, they don't have the government power to take something from you. The government don't have the power to take away your rights, her title versus California, right? So let's go deeper. Trump had the nerve to slip that into a freaking, look, when we deal with the public law, the public law is the official acts of the legislature, but it's not the common law. They're trying to steal your kids and your cars using private law. That's why they have these private courts with no due process. But that only is a court that you can use for persons who agree to associate with each other. Persons are public officials, government officials, or entities doing business. If a person contracts with another person, they can have a disagreement and privately deal with it. The problem is, is that CPS is private. You never contracted with them except for by force. They never gave you full disclosure of your rights. So the contracts are a fraud. They never gave you full disclosure. The contracts are a fraud. So Trump busted on him. He's like, oh yeah, y'all got to talk about everything. Private law too. <laughs> Somebody go tell what private law is. <laughs> private law. Y'all know in private law, when they're working, acting like they're government officials and it's all administrative, as Derek just said, that there's no judicial orders. Trump told y'all they're using private law in this system. He mentioned it. He wanted you to know it's a bunch of bull crap. Ain't none of these adoption orders legit. None of them. Now, I'm telling you six months to a year before you see the effects of what I'm telling you, I'm telling you what's happening right now and what Trump just did to them. Trump just blew their back out. He told they were taking the kids in the first place without right, without, without uh, authority, without law. They're taking your kids and putting them in a system. I put that in, look, y'all go look. At the time we went down to Congress set up by Robert Slavin and Francesca Amato. I went down there and put them on notice on a live video everybody can see. There were freaking people who worked for Congress in the room taking notes. I put them on freaking notice and then Fran sent them a video and it went across the freaking nation. Please don't hit like or heart, y'all. Please don't hit like or heart. Type it out if you like the video. Put it in the comments because it kills our bandwidth. 
So, guys, I proved to the people who were there that they were trafficking our kids. I put in the um, video to Congress, which they all got put on notice by Francesca Amato and Robert Slavin. We put them on notice, and I told them that you can't have a trust indenture that makes you a government official and then be working with the enemies of the people to take their kids. And they did it using private law. So Trump got everything that was in the affidavits. He got everything in the videos. He researched everything. There's a man in the movement, y'all, who went directly to Trump and Melania and talked to them in the Rose Garden uh, in June, I think it was, of last year. I can tell y'all, I deal with this person one-on-one. -on -one. This person also kick, uh, gives the information to kick down doors for all the pedos that's getting arrested. This man told me personally, hey David, Trump and Melania are starting to see what's happening with the kids. And a lot of that has to do with you and the people who are don't hit the like or heart button. Type out the word like if you like what I'm saying. Type out the words because they're going to kill the bandwidth. When you hit like, Facebook has a way of killing your bandwidth. When, when somebody's liking your videos and you're showing a lot of truth, they realize it and they kill your bandwidth, make the video stutter. So please don't hit the like button. Please don't hit the like button. I don't want to block you. Please don't hit the like button. So guys, let's look at what, let's recap what the freak I just showed y'all. Trump exposed that they're using private law in these fake courts. Steve, don't hit the like button. Please don't hit the like button, y'all. We gave the affidavits, right? We put Trump on notice. We put Barr on notice. We put the whole Congress on notice. We put in 2,000 affidavits to HHS for Trump's administration. After they got those 2,000 plus affidavits, they came out and said they know CPS is trafficking. That was last year. Anybody can prove it. I got the emails to prove it. Fran got the emails to prove it. Please don't hit like. I think that's Tracy. Please don't hit like. Please don't hit like, y'all, because it's going to kill the bandwidth. That's Facebook new trick to get rid of powerful people, right? So look at what Trump told. Now, I'm going to give y'all how we going to get these clowns. Trump then snuck and told that they were taking kids and that they... It's closed, too. It's closed yes, ma'am. To tomorrow, to 25th to the 27th. So guys, listen. So Trump exposed that they're taking kids without right, that they're taking kids without due process, that they're not hearing the mothers and the fathers or the kids. So Trump said he, listen, in the middle of the time where we got all these epidemics and crazy crap going on, Chaz, Raz, Laz, no, Laz is the cool dude. Chaz, Chop, uh, people... People going crazy all over the place, doing these different things, looting and rioting is going nuts, right? You're welcome, ma'am. So with all this going on, the thing that Trump fit, figures out is the biggest emergency order thing to do, executive order, is for CPS? Yes, because he's been waiting to get these clowns. He's been hearing y'all. He's been watching the videos. Just like we watch these videos, Trump is watching the videos. I know people who sent the videos to Trump. I'm telling y'all, they work with his campaign everything in my affidavit and Fran's work and David Strait's work everything in Chris Hallett's work Trump acknowledged in those freaking that executive order the other day Trump told they're not hearing the parents voices he wants the best attorneys to stand up for the parents even before a CPS can make a petition what is that going to do that is going to show that they're trampling the rights of the parents and block them from removing kids Trump is stopping them from using the kid system as a money pit because there was never a law that gave anybody authority to take the kids. We got all these kids in the system and everybody's like, well, Trump is giving more money for the kids in the system. Good. Get them the freak out of the system. Give them a way out. But what else is he doing? He's, Tracy, don't hit like, please, girl. Don't hit like. You're going to get, don't hit like, Tracy. Nobody hit the like button, please. <coughs> I, I can't keep saying this over and over, y'all. It's going to kill the bandwidth of the video if you hit like or heart or any of that or angry. Don't hit the buttons. There you go. That's right. Type it out. Good stuff, Tracy. Okay. So, guys, this is what I want you to see. Trump is blocking, is blocking. You could give me a watermelon, Matt. 
Anybody who wants to show me love for helping to fight, give me a watermelon. I love watermelon, y'all. It's healthy, it's good for you. It makes your blood flow well, good stuff. So what Trump did was, He's blocking the ability for them to take the kids in the first place. And if you look at my work, you'll see the one thing I always say is, anybody can argue over this dumb jump when a kid is in the system. My problem is, is you stole them and kidnapped them in the first place. You never had the power to take them. The cops had no, had no power to take them. CPS workers, any attorneys, none of them never had power to take them. The government don't have the power to take your kids, period. So I don't wanna argue over who's the best parent. I don't wanna argue over none of that junk. I don't argue over what you like. What I want to deal with is simply, where did you get the power to take a kid? In what part of the Constitution did we give you a power to take somebody's kid while the parent is still alive and doing good? Where in the Social Security Act did it say you had the power to take a kid? It tells you no federal agent, officer, or representative has the uh, authority to take children over the objections of the parents. It doesn't freaking exist, okay? It doesn't exist. So all this time, People and attorneys are trying to get you to argue over who's the best parent. Am I a better parent than David as a CPS worker or the foster care person I get paid to give them to? So if y'all look at all my work, you're going to see where I challenge people's ability to take the kids. The reason this is important is, hey, dude, I don't give a freak about your false private law. I want to know, just like I told y'all, it's private courts. Trump is telling y'all it's private courts by explaining the term or giving the term private law. Public law deals with the public. Private law is between individual people. So you don't freaking have the power to take nothing from me as one of the people. We can write a contract for it, but you ain't got the right to take nothing from me. Now, if you commit fraud in your contract or you don't give full disclosure, your contract is void and you can't take a kid. So if they say, well, we, we, you're on social security insurance, so we got the right to take your physical kid. I'm going to say, shut the freak up. You didn't create a physical kid. You don't have power over physical kids. You created a contract agreement for, for a birth certificate and a social security card. That's what the freak you did. And it's a child company. I'm the parent company. I mean, you create the parent company off of my person, not me, the one, the man. You create a parent company. Don't hit like, y'all. Please don't hit like. Please don't hit her. You create a parent company off the birth certificate. That's why. The first thing they do is take the birth certificate and give it to the other family. Take the birth certificate and start taking all the benefits and the money that's connected to the person so what they really did was is they lied and said they could take your kids freaking liars you can't take kids you can't take living babies you can take the birth certificate when the police show up the only thing they got power over is the birth certificate and the social security card that belongs to somebody from a private contract that does not belong to you they gave you the ability or right to use it with a license they can take it back, but they can't touch your physical baby. This is why Sandra Day O'Connor said something. Go go look, or it might have been the Society of Sisters or something like that. Go back and look in the Sandra Day O'Connor 2000 Troxel versus Granville case. And Sandra Day O'Connor, I believe it was, says this. Children are not the mere creature of state or creature of statute. See, they create something called a child in the statute that belongs to them. And then they tell you when you do something that they don't like, they have the right reserve to take the child. But it's not your kid. It's the birth certificate and the social security card. That's what the freak it is. If you don't believe me, commit social security fraud and see if they block your access to social security. Commit fraud when it comes to uh, unemployment and see if they don't suspend your ability to get unemployment. They have power over those entities. They don't have power over you as one of the people, right? So let's go a little bit deeper. Trump exposes that they're taking kids without telling you your rights. They're taking kids without telling the rights to the police. 
they're not putting out the documents that they were supposed to put out decades ago showing how to talk to them to get your kids back because if they give you that book you'll know your rights and they'll never be able to keep your kids next thing trump said which no other president in history has ever said that they're taking the kids without hearing the voices of the parents so he wants to give the parents the best attorneys to block them from even making a petition pre-petition from letting some dumb cps worker petition for your kids that's directly out of my affidavit I say, how are government officials who are supposed to be handling the rights of the people, taking the rights of the people by allowing private corporate entities called CPS to take, make a petition to take their kids? See, this is the stuff, y'all, that the attorneys in the movement don't want you to know. This is the stuff, I know y'all love her. I don't give a freak, I'm gonna just tell y'all the truth. This is the stuff Connie don't want you to know. Connie don't want you to know that they're using private law against you. Go back and watch my first video at DC. I ask everybody in the room, how many people know what the National Council of Juvenile Family Court Judges is? That is a private membership organization, the oldest in America, 30,000 people. Only person in the room who knew where they were, Connie Reguli. Connie Reguli knows exactly who the National Council of Juvenile Family Court Judges is. There is a man named Gupta. Gupta did a scholarly journal article called uh, the due process, oh, filling the due process donut hole in dependency. In there, he tells that the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges, I believe on page 23, is a membership organization of courts handling neglect and abuse cases. They got private memberships working in the private that are not government, taking people's kids. Connie Reguli knows. Connie Reguli helped Bill Clinton, from what I hear, make the ASFA law to take kids. Connie Reguli knows that in the ASFA law that it tells you that you should not be unnecessarily removing kids and inappropri inappropriately interfering with family life, which is in the private. She knows ASFA doesn't say they can take your kids, but she ain't tell nobody. She knows. On top of that, Connie Reguli knows what the 1935 Social Security Act said that I was the first one to bring to y'all and show y'all that they couldn't take your kids. That the actual law that created CPS says in it that they are not to take your kids against the objection of the parents. Why didn't she tell y'all when she had this 12,000 people group full of y'all that she helped write the law, which means she had to know the pre preceding law, right? The preceding law that was used to write, ask for the Social Security Act, she had to know it and it says in there they can't take your kids against your objection. So why didn't she just come out and tell all the families, hey, this dirty, ugly Negro Dave is telling y'all the truth. See, she wanted to stop the affidavits. Her, Raymond Schwab, Miko Hayes, fake news guy, uh, Ashley Cooper, um, Miko Hayes' girlfriend, Randy Scott Davis, <coughs> Karen Materna, another attorney, all got together and was working together. Cliff Jackson, who is Bill Clinton's best childhood friend. Bill Clinton, Cliff Jackson, the senator who's over CPS and Connie's group, Alan Clark, all got together and tried to attack all of us because they didn't want those affidavits out. Why wouldn't they want those affidavits out? They don't want those affidavits out because those affidavits we gave Trump is making him do what he's doing today. He's exposing that they're using private law against us, which I told y'all they were private courts. He's making y'all see, oh, I hear what you're saying and I'm gonna get him. Just help me. Give me some more facts so I can go after these clowns. See, Trump believes in due process. He ain't arresting people unless he got evidence. The evidence is in every one of y'all cases. The evidence is every one of the kids they took from y'all is evidence. So Trump is like, oh, y'all done took people's kids without right. Y'all done use private law against people. I'm gonna put it out there in my executive order. I'm gonna... See, Trump knows that this time they slowed y'all down a little bit when they told y'all don't listen to David Jose affidavits. Let's talk about CHOP. Let's talk about riots. Let's talk about black versus white. Trump is sending y'all a message personally. He's saying, listen, y'all, I heard what y'all said. I seen 
or got word of these thousands of affidavits. I know they broke the law. I talked to people directly. I watched the videos. I know what y'all are saying about what they're doing to y'all. So Trump is personally sending you a message saying, hey, stop losing your freaking focus. I know these people are stealing your kids. In the middle of a pandemic and all these so-called emergencies and riots and looting, what I care about is your kids. So can we get back to focusing on tearing these people apart with affidavits so I can get all these people? See, Trump wants to arrest them. Trump wants to punish the CPS workers. Y'all just saw CPS workers get arrested in the East Coast. <clears throat> That's because it's known that they're committing frauds and stealing kids as a team. So Trump is trying to give you a way to make it happen now and to fix things and bring your kids back. But he knows y'all lose focus and we lose focus when we get caught up in this race riot garbage, when we get caught up in all this other stuff. He's like, look, dude, I've been preparing to get you your kids back for quite a while. See, it's a possibility he could lose in November. They could cheat. He's trying to make it happen right now for y'all. He made an executive order. He's trying to get your attention. He's talking about private law. He's addressing all the issues we brought to his attention through the affidavits all the notice he's addressing the issues that chris hallett brought how it don't freaking fit our government he brought the issues francesca and robert and freaking um the whole hudak team and all these other people he's addressing the issues for y'all at a time when it's not even convenient y'all are we are we not paying attention to what's happening right now do we not want to get our kids back you got a time in history that ain't never happened before, which means you got a window to get your freaking kids. Everything we told Trump, he's listening to. Everything. Now, if you doubting or you saying, no, Trump is evil, he's not going to listen, he's part of the deep state. I don't give a freak what he's part of. If he does what we need him to do, I don't give a freak. All right? People say he's a KKK member. Well, if, if a KK member, KKK member get used by God to get our kids back, I don't give a freak. I don't get our kids back. All right? keep the fight going but the thing is guys let's knock this junk out no we can all put in the rest of our who, who will want to start everybody and make and get them who want to freaking stand up and fight i'm telling y'all secret stuff inside of trump's, doc, trump's document Go back and look and see if I'm lying that Trump in private law. Go back and see if Trump said that they're taking kids unnecessarily. See, when Trump says they're taking kids unnecessarily, that's directly in the affidavit and from, from ASFA, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton's law. So if Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton law actually told y'all something opposite than what the attorneys are telling y'all, when y'all attorneys dealt with y'all in court, they say, oh, well, ASFA is the law that we got to deal with because it allowed them to take your kids. Shut the freak up, you lying punks. It never did. ASFA never said anybody could take your kids. Y'all some freaking liars if you say it does. It gave no authority to remove kids. It only allowed them to adopt kids out faster that was in the system. That ain't got nothing to do with how they got there. They don't want to fight jurisdiction for y'all. Jurisdiction, guys. Jurisdiction has to be in place for them to take anything from you, and they never had jurisdiction to take your kids. Guess what? I'm going to tell y'all something else Trump did to y'all. There's no such thing of a statute of limitation in the common law. So Trump did something. I showed y'all about the common law, and I showed y'all about the statutes. In the common law, there's no statute of limitation. There's no statute of limitation on jurisdiction or fraud. If somebody never had jurisdiction over y'all, I'm gonna show y'all something crazy. You can go back and kill the case a hundred years down the road if you still lie. Watch this. <clears throat> Trump mentions about oversight and information on their statutory scheme and statutory limitations and time, how he wants that to be dealt with. He mentions statutory multiple times. He does that on purpose. Because the system is completely statutory and, and adoption is completely statutory and there has been historically, as I showed y'all in Black's Law 5, historically there is no historically there historically there is no adoption in the common law. 
So if there's no adoption in the common law and common law is the law of the land and common law judgments are the highest judgment, meaning if you had a case that was heard under the common law and a jury of your peers heard it, Article 7 of the Bills of Rights in the, in the Constitution of the United States <coughs> or for the United States, it tells you that any case over $20 that uh, a jury heard under the common law cannot be heard by any other court of the United States except for by the rules of the common law. So if you won a case under the common law and you use the common law, it always trumps the statutory law. And in order to take something from somebody, you have to use a jury of their peers in a court of record, which a court of record only moves by the common law, not statutes. The common law are those laws that were in place after the American Revolution when there was no statutes. The American Revolution, when there was no statutes, said that every man was free and independent. And that in order to take something from you, it had to be done by a jury of your peers. Trump just busted on him and told that all of their stuff is statutory. It's not the common law. When he tells y'all stuff and me, we need to slow down and read it and look at the words we don't understand. Because he's telling all their secrets right, in, right up under their nose. Why the freak would it benefit Trump right now? It don't benefit him to start talking about kids. Because really, the number of y'all who kids got taken and us is not a big enough number to worry about if you're just trying to get elected. So right now for Trump to put up a executive order going against what CPS is doing and the people in CPS realize plain as day what he's doing to them. The attorneys realize, oh, he's blocking our ability to be able to steal people's kids. That's not good for his election, okay? So I'm showing y'all truth. If you can understand this and you like this and you think it's fitting and it makes sense for you, please hit the like button. If you can understand, if you can see this, if you like this, uh, no, don't hit the like button, I'm sorry. Please type like, I understand, let's get them. And if you wanna go after these people and destroy them and, uh, and, and not destroy them and kill them, you know, but I mean, destroy them like tear down the system. If you wanna go ahead and, and stick the fork in that system and get them for all this private law they're using against you and get them for these private courts they're using against you and get them for taking your kids and get your kids back and get more people arrested. If you really want to freaking get it, let me know. Say something. I'm tired, y'all. My body's beat up a little bit. I've been detoxing, right? I've been taking some health stuff. It's been cleansing my body like crazy. You can see my eyes look a little tired. I got up at two o'clock in the middle of the night two days ago in order to, <clears throat> Thursday morning, yesterday, <clears throat> in order to be able to show y'all the truth about what these people are doing. I was so hyped up about what Trump did <clears throat> that I came up to tell y'all at one o'clock to two o'clock in the morning, I'm up doing a video. Right now, I'm so hyped up about what Trump is doing, I'm ready to show y'all how you can use the law and we're gonna get all our kids back. Listen, Trump has admitted it as the executive, chief executive officer, he admitted they took your kids and are taking your kids without law. He admitted it. He put it out there in the open so everybody can see. Nobody can say you're lying now. The, the chief executive officer said it. So you ain't got no reason to be afraid. Just know that those people, Lewis Ewing, fake tribal attorney, working with the system, wanting people to not get their kids back. When he tells you, you ain't gonna never win, this dude is a clown. When they said nobody ever gonna do nothing, ain't nobody gonna hear you, ain't no president gonna hear y'all, y'all wasting y'all time, <laughs> time going to DC. <clears throat> Can y'all tell me, did we waste our time or did we not? Trump is telling what we said. Trump is telling, right? And all the people in the movement get credit for it. I wouldn't have no platform if it wasn't for y'all and God. Y'all the ones who shared my stuff. Y'all the ones who share Chris Hallett stuff. Y'all the one who share David Strait stuff. Y'all the one who share Malika stuff. Y'all the ones who do all these things, right? So.
my body is a little rough because I'm healing and I'm going through these processes. And uh, I put the work in though, your body takes some rough turns while it's healing, but once you're healed, you become way stronger, you become way better, right? Your body starts healing from the inside out. Little marks you used to see on yourself start leaving. Injuries that you had start healing. See, you do those things by faith because you know that God put things together for you to be healed and be strengthened. <clears throat> so when it comes to law, you do it by faith. You put the work in, right? And the work is behind closed doors, behind the scenes. Can't everybody see what you're doing? But then you start seeing the effect of all the work you put in and the prayer that you put in. You start seeing God blessing it out in the open. So I'm hoping that you guys are willing and, and able to move. And my, I got affidavits of mine on YouTube with Fran, um, where everybody can see why I did the affidavit the way I did it. Um, so the, all that is out in the open. Like I've been very careful with dealing with people because I get a lot of trolls and agents that come after me who want to say I'm practicing law. They're looking for a reason to stop me, right? I don't do a lot of stuff in the private with people one-on-one -on -one because I can't trust everybody, right? I, I had a situation today where or yesterday where some lady says to me, oh, I think you're being pulled into some dark places. First of all, you don't know me. It's some lady named Serenity some Sundiff and she ho hopefully she's on my video. She wants to come on and explain what she was saying. Uh, because if you think that I'm some person who uh, is gullible or getting tricked, and let me explain that situation anyway. So the woman came, I don't, I don't use the ADA, number one. I ain't freaking read the jump. I'm sure it got some good benefits because Fran and got a lot of kids back using the ADA. But I ain't even read the junk, okay? So if you got an issue with somebody who uses something that says ADA on it, you don't have to bring it on my page and try to argue with me about it to make a reason to have us go back and forth because you say I might have got tricked by what somebody else did. I don't do it. So that's none of my business. You ain't even need to bring it to my page. But what happened was this young lady brings this thing to my page and she's talking about how somebody in one of her groups, which I don't give a freak about the person in the group and what they're talking about, got on her because she posted, and I don't know if this is the truth, I don't know. She posted a little card, right? And this little card says the name of some group of people called the We Got the Right to Breathe Agency or something, right? So you know dang well they're not saying they're the ADA. You know dang well they're not saying they're the government. They're just a group of people who come together who decided to use some of the concepts and laws of the ADA. So if the ADA says, I don't have to tell you my disability or you could be fined, that's their law. So when you're dealing with people in the world like police and judges and attorneys and ignorant freaking politicians that don't know the law, the reason CPS has been able to take kids and I just proved that Trump brought it out is that they're hiding the rights of the parents, which is the law. They're hiding the law from all the people involved so they can run over your rights. So if somebody goes and gets a piece of paper, a poster board, or a freaking car, the size of a business car, and they put on there, hey, I have the right to breathe. If they write on the dang document, I have the right to breathe on a card, it shows you that it's not coming from the ADA. Stop being dumb, okay? Don't bring dumb junk like that to my page to talk junk about people or to try to act like I'm being... I'm being brought into bad something and I don't use that junk. But for the lady Serenity Kundiv, if you're on, please come on. I'll let you come on live and we can talk about it because you're coming to my page. I don't freaking know you, right? I don't freaking know you. You're coming to my page. You're talking about these people who are using this and how I guess you call the ADA. I called the ADA and the ADA said it's fake. How the freak is a piece of freaking cardboard fake when it's just somebody saying, I have the right to breathe, the ADA said, I don't have to tell you my condition. If the ADA said it and they're acknowledging that and they're putting it on a freaking card so that the public officials can know and they're not saying we are the ADA and we're telling you, you can't mess with people. Why the freak are you freaking tripping out over some dumb job? Like that's just ignorant. So she brought that on my page. Oh. Uh, then I'm like, ma'am, I, I don't give a freak if somebody puts notice on a piece of paper. That's what you're supposed to do. 
they didn't write out saying that they were the ADA. They wrote their own freaking little card saying, I have the right to breathe. This is my reasons why. The ADA says I don't have to do this. Screw you. Kick rocks, whatever. Signed us. That's not a fraudulent document. So please don't bring that junk ever on my page again and do that junk. And I think this lady was like trolling because why would you freaking bring that on my page to have a discussion and an argument about me? And when I said, oh, well, that's just somebody writing what their rights are on a piece of paper to give people notice. She says, well, I think that you're getting uh, uh, brought into some dark places where you're following people. Shut the freak up. I don't use that junk. I don't know these people. I don't deal with these people like that. So stop. Okay. On top of that, she came out yesterday and said, oh, well, ain't nobody. I make a post about what's happening good in the movement. She says, ain't nobody standing up and nobody's doing this and that. I'm like, first of all, who the freak are you? Because I've never seen you standing up. I don't know your name for standing up. I ain't never seen you out in the open fighting people who are going against us. I ain't never seen you on a live video putting your life on the line like Sandra R.N. or David Strait or Chris Hallett or even Kirk Pendergrass, even though me and Kirk Pendergrass, we had our issues. I still don't see people out there putting their life on the line like Timothy Charles Holmes said, but she's talking about ain't nobody standing up. I'm like, why are you coming on my page talking about ain't nobody standing up when ain't nobody here know you, <laughs> right? So it's a bunch of bull. You get these people who are really trolls, right? They're really trolls who are trying to act like they know you who come in and they want to just drop some little sly comments. I think you're going off on the wrong road. And David, all, all this Q stuff. Listen, I don't freaking know who the freak Q is. And I tell people that I'm not a Q follower. I don't understand it. I don't get it. So until somebody sits me down and teaches me freaking gematria and teaches me how to freaking understand this stuff, I don't get it. I don't spend my time on it because I don't know it. And until somebody breaks it down, sits me down and breaks it down for me like Chris Hallett breaks stuff down, right? It don't matter to me, right? So I have to say this stuff and I want y'all to see because sometimes the people who little come in and inch their way in and try to act like they got a, they making comments that somebody care about. First of all, some lady named Serenity Kundith something, Serenity Kundith something, I don't know. I put up a post and I asked, any, can anybody vouch for this lady? Anybody know her? Y'all hear what's funny? Some more troll stuff. Somebody who's not even on my friends list come on my page and says, I can vouch for her. Then I say to the person who vouched for her named Danny or something, hey, Danny, um, you ain't even on my friends list. Why the freak are you vouching for her? Who, who brought you over here? So you can see it's trolls undercover getting other trolls to vouch for them when well, she ain't even on my stuff, you know? And so the thing is, now, when you say about some of this Q stuff, I got to say, there's only so many coincidences. And so somebody can only talk about what's going to happen so many times before I start saying, man, somebody knows something, <laughs> right? I never dog a freaking Q person because I realize they're putting out too much stuff that can't be coincidence. It's like Timothy Charles Holmes said, that dude said stuff like six, seven years ago that's coming... No, I ain't gonna say it like that. I'm not gonna say he said stuff six, seven years ago that's coming true now. That dude said stuff that was true six, seven years ago and nobody had the ability to verify it because we just ain't on his level. And right now today, the junk is coming out. People getting arrested from what he talked about years ago. So I understand that there's some people out here that God is blessed with knowledge to do certain things. It's like freaking Chris Hallett putting out something about... Uh, his diagram about freaking asthma and CPS. I can't touch Chris Hallett with a 10 foot freaking pole with that stuff. There's certain stuff I do very well. There's certain stuff Chris Hallett do that I'd be like, uh, 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 Chris, uh, can you just break down grammar and tell me what that means again? I forgot, dude. I'm from the ghetto. Like we didn't really have school books. I forgot what that meant in grammar. Can you help me? Right? So the thing is, that's right, Tracy, you're right. We stick with what we know. <clears throat> I'm happy as heck I got bad mamma jammas in the movement. And see, I'm kind of funny. Y'all got to forgive me because me and Chris is so cool that I want to call Chris my Negro and he knows I do it. <laughs> but on Facebook, people will block my stuff if I do it. So I'll be like, man, 
Chris is a bad Negro, right? That's my Negro, you know? And I want to say that because it's a term of endearment. He's so close to me. But I can't say it because Charles would be trying to block my stuff because I say Negro, right? Even though government documents say Negro. But I'm telling y'all, you know, some people get jealous, right? They're jealous at the gifts that people have. I'm like, man, I ain't jealous. I, I realize God is tearing stuff down. So I'm excited. I'm happy. Now, Danielle, I might call you my Negro too, though, because you put out some good stuff and you got some brown in you, girl. You kind of brown, you know? <laughs> Robert Slavin too, right? Robert Slavin from the country, but he know I call him my Negro in a second, you know? For real. He just, he just cool like that. We just like this, you know? And so I got, I got people who are leaders in the movement who are uh, like the big brothers that I never had, you know? Cool as heck. What up, what up, what up, Big Rob? <clears throat> and see, Rob, he's the one I was telling y'all about earlier who set up everything to go to D.C. I told Fran, his girlfriend, today or yesterday, I said, uh, E-girl, <laughs> that's right, girl. Like, man, I'm telling you, Danielle, you, uh, you're you a bad mamma jamma, you know, and you speak the truth and you just put it out there like it is and you cool as heck, you know? And so I, I got so much love for my people. I don't see this like black and white stuff you know i don't see this black and white stuff like i can see that we got different colors on us but really i connect with people's soul so i'm like man i'm like this lady got soul this dude got soul you know and it's like it's family to me so i ain't gonna lie y'all when i was in the ghetto we used to say the n-word right in my house in my house i'm just gonna be real with y'all the n-word wasn't a bad word right the n-i-g-g-a word wasn't a bad word and so i used to say it so it's a habit so I got to be careful myself now because, right, <laughs> I might just say the N-word, right? But we didn't say the N-word like, hey, you're an African. We said the N-word like, you my dog, you my closest person or whatever, you one of my people or whatever, right? So you got your own languages and own stuff that you say. And I don't get offended by the N-word. You know, people, I got a dude who's white in Arizona, who's one of my, he's one of our dogs. We rode motorcycles together. He's hood, right? He's hood as heck. And he'll walk around and he'd be like, man, y'all is tripping, right? And I don't get mad because, you know, there's so much stuff that goes on in this world. We could spend all our time mad and tripping and mad over words and stuff like that, right? And people tripping out over everything and people tripping out over race and race wars and who was a slave to who and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, dude, I live my life so free, you know, that I can't be tripping about over who was a freaking uh races in the past who was a freaking slave owner and who, all this and all that listen i'm about solutions winning and going after things with everything i got i ain't spending my time focused on who did what that's right danielle i ain't focused on time uh worried about who did what and this and that and the other over time but the thing is is that i realize people are what they are i love them for being people i love them because god loved them and <clears throat> I ain't looking looking at you funny over no stupid job, but man these trolls Dude, don't even come on my page with that dumb job But if this serenity kundif girl is on here who her page says she's a pagan I really would like you to come on my live right now. We can have a discussion About what you got to say because I took affidavits and I took different laws from the Social Security Act from ASFA I took the state constitution uh, different parts of that I took stuff from uh the Supreme Court case and uh, I put it on there and I gave notice and we got good victories a lot of people got their kids back are you telling me that's fake is that fake because somebody writes a law on a piece of paper to show other people to let them know quit freaking taking my rights from me quit stealing my property when what is 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 Donald Trump's uh, executive order only legit because he wrote it as a government official or can I just write something on paper can I write a piece of paper on my window and says hey the law says that you can't trespass on my property and freaking will I be wrong would it be fake then or do, does the government have to write it for me that's some dumb junk the people are higher than the government so all this silly stuff for people trying to shame you for dumb junk I'm sure the girl is on my page probably writing on one of my other posts She's not going to want to come say what she said live or whatever, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, when you act like you know me or you act like we cool or something like that. Now, there's a lot of people who could say a lot. Yeah, that pagan does say a lot. <clears throat> there's a lot of people 
who know me, who can say a lot of stuff to me on Facebook, a lot of stuff, say whatever the freak you want to say, call me whatever, you know, get mad at me, get pissed off and we'll be friends again. But for real though, if you're one of those people who don't come around, I don't see you stand up and fighting, you don't comment on videos, you don't freaking stand up on your own freaking videos or your own page. If I go on your page and I don't see you standing up, if you post other people's stuff, but you won't stand up and you want to come have a freaking opinion, I'll be free, <laughs> right? I don't care that much. But that's the thing, y'all, is that, uh, yeah, people weren't talking about the law like this, but now that it's being put out, we, we getting it going, you know? That's real, Danielle. <clears throat> so the thing is, guys, you know, I love the heck out of y'all, and that's why sometimes I do get worked up. I do get, I can be, it can seem that I'm being rough. But I understand that we have a goal to save kids. I understand that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people who want their kids back right now. And when somebody start wasting my time with some dumb junk or they don't really want to fight, they just plan. See, if, if, the, if, the, if the fight is all of us coming together to win and get our kids back, I don't even mind if you're a soft coward who don't want to fight. I'll fight for your kids too. But don't come trying to interrupt acting like, oh, well, I feel David Jose is mean because he corrects me or he gets a little rough when you try to lie. It's like, no, dog. You come with that stupid junk, I'm going to shut you down in like two seconds because we're so close to victory, right? Before I even saw that Trump talked about private law, before I saw that Trump was trying to stop them from taking kids in the first place, I was telling y'all what I could see Trump doing and telling y'all what was coming. And people laughed at me. So I got to go six months to a year with people laughing at me. Right? I told y'all Trump was going to come out with some stuff to stop CPS. I told y'all people are going to get arrested. I told y'all that there was some new things that were supposed to come. What y'all see with this executive order that came now was supposed to be here in January. Trump was getting ready to stop the administrative courts and slam them in January. Even before that, in November, he was going to start some stuff. Then they hit him with the impeachment. So things are happening, right? Uh, let's see. People don't really understand what the left government has really been up to. Yeah, that's right. See, Trump found out. <clears throat> he said, oh, I didn't even realize, I didn't even realize how deep the swamp was. See, Trump was like, I'm getting rid of the swamp. <laughs> Dude got into the office like, man, this swamp was a little bit deeper than what I thought. I didn't know they was going to come at me like this. So they tried to impeach Trump because Trump was arresting all the pedophiles. Trump said in his executive order that in the last three years, this is funny. I hope y'all realize what happened. In the last three years, the numbers in foster care went down. Heck yeah, it did. Why? Because Trump arrested pedophiles. Trump started going after pedophiles and getting people all across the nation and pedophiles take up a big part of the foster care system. They get scared when they're all getting arrested. So then you saw the governors and states start begging for more foster care parents. Y'all ain't, ain't doing foster care no more. What's going on? Uh, Trump ain't freaking playing. That's what's going on. 1,700 arrests of pedophiles at one time. That hit your system a little bit, don't it? Then he arrested over 3,000 plus pedophiles. And they're like, man, screw this. Impeach this dude. They came up with a fake phone call to get Trump, right? Trump told he was going to get the pedophiles before he came in. I don't think they took him seriously. Dude went after pedophiles. They like, we just need to impeach him. We don't care if we got to shut down the economy. We don't care if people lose their businesses. Let's stop Trump from being... Uh, picked up again. We got to do something, right? That dude, and I told people how he was doing it. I was like, listen, y'all, Trump is shutting down the pedophiles because that's the foster care systems in buyers. It, Trump's administration came out and said 88% of the kids that's found in trafficking come directly from foster care and CPS. That means they're being put through the system purposely. They know that. So Trump's like, arrest all the in buyers. Once you get rid of all the end buyers, the system gets stuck. Now he's like, oh, too many kids are stuck in the system. I give you some money to get, get, get rid of some more. And I want to strengthen the faith-based community and other people to make sure the kids got really good families to go to in their demographic. See, Trump knows that a lot of the elite, not just regular white people, the, a lot of the elitist white people want little mixed and black kids or Hispanic kids in their care. They like using those kids for certain reasons, right? A lot of couples who have certain situations who might be black want a white kid. So Trump says, uh, 
let's get a situation where we have demographics where the kids go to places where they're more like the people who take them. Now, let me tell y'all something else Trump did that I almost forgot about. This dude Trump said, hey, let me put it in this law or this executive order because he don't have to make law. He can make executive orders for all the people who work for the Fed. Trump put it in the law. Let me keep all the families together. The siblings. Why he had to do that, y'all? Because Trump knows that they're taking these kids and they're trafficking them. And if you separate them from siblings, it's easier to traffic them. So Trump is trying to make sure that they stay with their siblings. They stay with people who are like the culture who they're in. And he's blocking uh, CPS from being able to take them and not research to find out people really have family. Because y'all didn't told Trump. Uh, they're taking our kids and they never give them to our relatives. Come on now. Come on. Now. Look, what's the, what's the chances that I could have showed all y'all this in my work and in what I teach and what Robert Slavin teaches and what Fran teaches, what David Strait teaches, what Chris Hallett teaches, right? What Malika teaches, what Michi Slay teaches, right? What's the chances that we could have put all this work together and served them with it and put it put them on notice and then Trump speak about all of it in his executive order? To the T? What did I not say in my affidavit that Trump didn't say or address? Go through my affidavit and name one thing he don't address that's in my affidavit. One thing. You won't find it. Right? <clears throat> so God is letting us win. He's given us the victory. He's helping us to stand and we can do a whole bunch of affidavits. Now, I got the stuff out. It's on Francesca's website. Y'all see I got trolls coming after me. Everybody want to act like I'm practicing law without a license and all this bull, right? Which lawyers don't even have a license, <clears throat> but it's their tool of choice, what they want to use. But anybody who wants to talk to me privately and personally and have help, between us one-on-one -on -one, with nobody else there y'all know that trolls have been asking for my information trying to get a number to call i showed y'all pictures of that if you want to talk to me privately personally one-on-one -on -one, and i show you stuff that's to help you fight as one of a member of my own uh group i only charge 20 dollars for a whole year for the pma pma is a private membership association that allows us to talk in the private and we're part of the same membership, so it ain't no way that you can come after me and say, David gave me legal advice or nothing like that. It ain't no game. <clears throat> so it protects you and it protects me. So $20 is only is, is a cheap amount for a whole year. And people be, people who get in for $20, they, you can ask right here on Facebook. They can tell you. They have called me at times during the day, during the night. They message me and we go back and forth. So if you want to be part of a private membership, $20. If you want to just take my videos and learn the knowledge, do whatever the freak you want to do. My affidavits are out there. You can see what it is. You can do whatever the freak you want to do. Or if you want to deal with me personally and privately, you could be part of my private membership. It's only 20 bucks. <clears throat> and we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. You can ask all the questions you want to. If I don't know, I'll go find the answers. But the thing is, that just protects me and it protects you. It gives you what you want and it protects me, right? Um, so anybody who wants to join a private membership, you can. Uh, Sophia, she can tell you she joined the private membership. Ask her if she can communicate with me whenever she feels like it. <coughs> um, another thing is uh, Trump has answered and responded to every concern we had. And we're winning. And we're having massive victory. And then in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of chop chas, in the middle of people having uprisings and looting, in the middle of all the crazy stuff going on, Trump is trying to make, not trying, he's making executive orders saying that your rights are being trampled, CPS is hiding the law books from you, and destroying you without right, and not letting the parents have their voice. Trump is saying that. So I don't give a dang. Uh, it's, it's, it's other law, law stuff too, Tracy. Like, most of the stuff that's being done to you is being done by trampling your rights as a national of a state. And so we deal with that issue. We deal with status. We deal with status correction. We deal with breaking it down and explaining to you why you need to do it. For a long time, I'm going to tell y'all something. For a long time, people were 
talking about status correction. You got to correct your status. You got to correct your status. And some of them do it the right way. Some of them do it the wrong way. But the problem is, stop telling me I need to do this. I need to do this. If you don't explain to me what a status correction is. Some of us come in the dang law movement dumb as heck. Okay. I came in dumb as heck. Stop using these terms to me that I don't have any idea what it is. You need to tell me what status is, bro. Tell me what standing is. Tell me what jurisdiction is. Break it down to me like a third grader so I can be part of the conversation. And then as we all come together, understanding truth, that's how we gain remedy. You can't get remedy if you don't learn the truth. You can't learn the truth unless you love each other enough to take down the time to talk. I can't teach you anything unless I teach you line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. I got to break down the different parts of things so you can understand the foundation. And I can't make myself seem like I'm smart and you're dumb. So therefore, I can't teach you or something like that. Remedy comes in the people knowing the truth. Thomas Jefferson explained how you can't have slavery in an educated society. If you want to make slavery, don't teach the people. Some people act like they want to be the best law teacher in the nation. They want to be the best law person. So they got to be smarter than everybody else. And they can't tell nobody else truth. And you can't tell them nothing. And they can't tell you nothing. And we got to fight over every stupid thing. And we got to, we got to freaking bicker between one another and freaking debate all the time to show who's, uh, show whose toothpick is the longest. It's like, my toothpick is this long. Well, my toothpick is this long. Well, I'm the greatest. I'm better than you. I don't give a freak about your toothpick. Your toothpick is your toothpick. Let me be concerned with my own toothpick. But let's not try to have a pecking order contest because your remedy is in the people knowing the law and the truth. This is why we've been winning. This is why Robert Slavin is so successful. This dude took us down to DC, which is something I would have never thought about. Y'all would have never saw me in no freaking DC. That wasn't even my, in my realm of thinking. I was doing live videos. Fran brought me on her live video. Then I started really going crazy. Everybody started seeing me, it started going off the hook. I wasn't super, super, super well known before uh, Fran opened the doors for her platform for people to really see me. Didn't, right? I just gotta be real. Chris Hallett and, and uh, Kirk Pendergrass and uh, John Gentry, they brought me on their platform and let me talk on their platform. I was a nothing and a nobody. People were getting to know me or whatever, but you know, it wasn't like uh, other people didn't take part in God building me up and using me. So how the heck I'm gonna be looking at other people like I'm better than them? Get the freak out of here. I'm just a regular old dude, right? Ashy elbows. I stay ashy down to the socks, <laughs> right? That's right, we got a common goal and we got to win. And all these trolls and stuff, we ain't got time for them. They full of garbage. We need to recognize what they are, walk past them, leave them in the dust, and freaking kick some butt, right? It's our time to win. I'm telling y'all, 2020, I was gonna make a documentary called Hindsight 2020, the year that parents got their kids back, right? I've been telling people about this. <coughs> and uh, in 2020, it looked like God making it happen. So <laughs> it's on. People could pay the $20 through uh, Facebook Messenger you have to tell me you want to join here. I'll send you a message. When you get the message, you respond. I'll put the request for the $20 in your messenger and you can pay it there. No, I don't like taking it from PayPal because I know people are dirty and slick at times. So I, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, you can do it through Cash App. If you don't have Cash App, you can get Cash App, right? If you don't have a credit card, no, I don't want you to send any money to any address you think is mine. I'm not playing that game. Don't trust people. Don't trust the foolish stuff. I want to send you a cashier's check. No, I want to send you a check to your house. No. How about that? <laughs> no way. I already know the game, dude. Stop. All right. I think about things. I don't just walk around willy nilly. You ain't setting me up. You can try. You might catch something when you do, but just letting you know, I don't walk around stupid and uh, not paying attention. I might look this way, but I really ain't dumb. All right just for good measure so you can keep your checks you can keep your freaking uh whatever else you want to send right i don't want you sending me money uh or federal reserve notes through the mail i don't want a check from you okay if you if you if all you got is a check and you have no other way to pay and you can't get the money to somebody else to pay through a card then we don't need to talk that bad personally right now let's say another one 
If you're one of those people who say, well, the FBI and the feds can creep into anything. I don't want to talk to you on a private app. Then we don't need to talk that well. Right? Very easy. Right? If you say, well, David, uh, you can trust me. I don't give a freak about trusting you. It ain't about trusting you. I tell you that I get death threats and hits put out on my life. If you can't respect the fact that I don't want to talk on Facebook Messenger or your stupid phone, we don't need to talk. All right? So if you like it that way and that's just your way, well, I don't trust these special apps, then don't talk to me. That easy. I still love you. Don't talk to me. Right? <laughs> All right. So there we go. So yes, I have a way of doing things, but I do things this way for a reason. If you can't deal with my reasons because you got to have it your way, McDonald's, I'm sure. Oh, no. Burger King will help you. You can have it your way with Burger King. You just won't have it your way with me. There we go. Right? I won't force you. You don't force me. <laughs> you ain't my daddy. I ain't your daddy. Right? So anyway, that's what it is, guys. I thank you so much for coming on this video. Um, I'm thinking I might upgrade my stuff some more. I might go back to doing uh, some videos and have where I can screen share on the page so you guys can see the better um, I might put it together some more so you guys can have access to those documents where I can put up links and stuff um, I might make the production quality a little better again because you guys are asking for it so I'm not gonna pay for it myself if I get 10 people who want to join my private membership and and the $200 is covered that it costs to do that then I'll let the private membership buy the stuff to be able to take care of those things to help the people but I'm not paying for it myself no more because I've been spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and people have been able to get affidavits all around the country I've been taking care of people out of my own pocket I've been paying for people's affidavits I've been giving people cars uh, helping raise money for people to have cars pay their rent and all that stuff and the very moment that somebody comes online and say oh David Jose charged me for an affidavit, which I never do. People who I've given money to or helped for free and spent all, my, all this money for, a lot of times they won't even stand up and say, you know, you're talking about Dave, but he gave me affidavits for free. I got my kids back. You know, he, he did this and that for me. And that dude, he don't charge people for his stuff. You know, people get it, but then people don't stand up for you. So I'm not going to continue to spend all this money and do all these different things now the private membership association money is coming in if you join the membership so i'll let the membership pay for it which is still money that could be used for something else but still i'm going to go ahead and take care of it with that if, to, if, if 10 people join i'll use that to upgrade the stuff to help you guys out it's not for me but uh i'll do that you know but either way it is what it is if you want to join do if you don't don't i don't care i just want to help the people I teach to people for free like these videos all the time. If you want private stuff or whatever, then of course that's in the private and I have to protect myself. A lot of the haters are trying to come and say I'm practicing law and all this bull crap, trying to set stuff up. So I'm not going to make it easy for them. They're going to have to explain why they're part of my membership association and trying to report me for practicing law. That ain't going to work very well. <laughs> it's funny, but I make it cheap. $20 is nothing. I could say $100 for the year. That would be fair. Because people can call me anytime, day or night, right? And the thing is, is that, um, you know, I don't charge people for all this law stuff, whatever. So, um, but I do get to protect myself. So, and I have to, right? So it's time for us to go get the kids back, like Rob said. And it's up to y'all, you know? You want to get it or you want to play, right? And we ain't playing games. We ain't playing no games no more. I'll bust your head if you... I forgot that song. All right? But anyway... <laughs> We ain't playing. We dropping that fire. We going after people. It's freaking on. It's freaking on, right? It's on. It's on. And we going to win. Trump then came on and showed y'all that he heard everything we said. So the thing is, you got the choice. Do you want to be a buster and crying about everything that happened wrong? Or are you ready to stand up and fight? You know? I've been on that fight tip for a long time. People know me. I be like, they be like, dude, Dave, are you going to be okay? Like, you haven't seen your kids in two years. I'm like, dude, I ain't crying. I'm in war. Thank you for reminding me. It's been two years. Oh, shucks, right? <laughs> you know, you be too busy fighting, right? So you got to fight, right? Be ready to stand. That's right. We ain't scared. People didn't call me out like, oh, 
We're in your area. We're coming to kill you. And I'm like, all right, player, whatever. Let me go get some food real quick. I'll call you back when I make it back. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Screw what they talking about. Like, dude, you want to bring that fire? Bring that fire. But we in. It's over with. So <clears throat> that's the thing. And guys, y'all got to realize, collectively, we are all making a huge difference. Remedy for our individual cases are bound in us teaching the people so everybody has out in the open, in, in their mind and out in the open, what's really happening. That's how you take over this system and fight back. So anyway, anybody else who wants to join, please put a comment here first. David, I want to join the private membership. Then, if you're not my friend, send me a friend request because Facebook is going to hide your message. So I'll never see it. So then when I go see your friend request, I'm going to click on it and send you a message and I'm going to see, oh, shucks, Facebook was hiding. They already tried to talk to me. So then that way I can see the message. I'll send you a request for $20. You could pay the request. If you ain't got uh, Messenger where you could pay, get Cash App. You could get it, get it in through Cash App, right? Other than that, if you can't get Cash App and you can't go through Messenger, don't even talk to me about the group. I don't want you in it, right? It's just that if you don't love me enough to care about my safety, then I don't love the idea of having a conversation enough to talk about it. You know, if that's what you want, you know. Now, if you're one of my people and I love the heck out of you, I care about you anyway. Um, and you know, I put out whatever for you anyway. This is just about private stuff. All right. So anyway, I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm going to get out of here. Send me a message if you want it. And, and right here in the comments, I'm going to go ahead and get my business together, whatever. Handle business if the Lord should let me live. I pray that he does. I pray that he gives me the ability to continue to fight, to finish the little stuff I got to do, get my little guys now, because I got my orders. And uh, let's make it happen, Captain. All right. I will catch you guys later. Y'all be cool. Y'all stay out of trouble.